Hello, and welcome to the Knights of the Nightmare Let's Play. This is video 23, covering scene 19. Last time, as the Wisp, we stumbled across Melissa once again. This is the second time we've seen her, and upon noticing that Maria was no longer with us, she decided it would be a good opportunity for her to kill us. Uh, fortunately, she wasn't able to pull it off. We drove her away yet again. During her retreat, she realized, holy shit, that was the arbitrator. So the cat's out of the bag, I suppose. Um, she's aware that we we're running around. In the meantime, as the wisp, we continued onward and ran into some monsters that wanted to start some shit. So let's deal with it. All right, let's see what we got here. Um, before I even get started though, I take an opportunity to hold down the L button and get a portrait of the field here. Uh, I should do this more often. It's really cool. It's some really neat artwork that unfortunately gets covered up by the gameplay stuff. Okay, we have a uh, wizard here, uh, Juno. We have his key item. Uh, Lance Knight, Heinel. Her key item is in our inventory as well. Uh, NPC here, Coolidge. Uh, Gaston, an NPC. We have his key item. And Filmier, I guess. I don't know. We have her key item as well. Uh, some monsters on the field, of course. Um, I take the time to highlight this giant ogre, this fire ogre. Uh, if you notice, I'm checking out his pattern that he's going to travel up and down the field. Uh, he comes pretty close to that crate, and if you recall, uh, these guys' special move are, is that they'll destroy objects on the field. So he will destroy that crate with the key item inside it if I don't intercept him. So I'm going to have to take uh, some care to take care of that before he has a chance to ruin everything. So with that in mind, since we have a Lance Knight on the field already, I throw on a Ice Lance. That'll mess up the Fire Ogre pretty good. And I go ahead and throw on a Lightning Rod for the Wizard. Um, I haven't used Wizards very much yet, so we'll get a good display of what they can do in this. Alright, here comes some key items. That's Heinel's. And Juno's key item is getting loaded up. So we're able to cover both the knight's key items in this first round, that's kind of nice. Okay, three key items on the field, one in that box, then there's a signpost and a patch of grass we have to worry about. But the box is what's in danger of the ogre smashing it. She's talking about Oswald, who was the archer we just recruited last last scene. All right, Heinel, get in there. Hurry up and get that key item before the ogre ruins it. Alright, key item gotten. Good job. Now if you keep an eye on the ogre, he's going to notice that box and he's going to try and smash it. There he goes. I have an opportunity to interrupt him, but I don't bother. And, yep, he goes ahead and destroys it. Uh, if the key item was still inside that, I would have been boned. I'd have to wait for it to respawn just to get the first key item. But now, um, since he wouldn't have destroyed it for me, I don't have to worry about hauling Johan on the field to get rid of it. So thanks, butthole. Uh, your reward is an ice lance in the back. Juno is talking about Bonita, who is a duelist we recruited. Uh, she's been transold away, though. Alright, just getting Heinel in position now so that we can work on the other key items on the field. Okay, I go ahead and use the wizard Juno a few times here. Check out his attack. Uh, it covers a good area, but it takes forever to actually land. As you can see, the monsters can still walk around while he's trying to cast a spell. Uh, it makes it a little difficult sometimes to land it. Hurt. 
Now you may have noticed, well, he's doing double damage to that little ogre guy, or excuse me, the little orc guy, uh, but he's still standing. Yeah, that's really more the fault of the rod. Unfortunately, I don't have a very strong lightning rod to give him. Alright, the little orc guy is dead, and we got a key item out of the grass. Uh, the lamp, or excuse me, the signpost still has a key item inside it. So I go ahead and charge up Heinel. And I don't get a full charge, so she only gives it a light tap. But she's able to get the 1% damage to release the key item. Okay, we got three key items. We'll just have to load up Johan and destroy the patch of grass and the signpost so that they can respawn later. As I'm fiddling around, you see that red blob up in the corner there. Um, unfortunately, uh, there's no knight on the field right now that can attack him. And I pretty much decide, okay, I'm just going to have to live with it. Um, that blob's going to have complete impunity this round. Um, the, the wizard, Juno, he cannot turn around. He can only face southwest or southeast. And the blob doesn't come down low enough to get into his range. So it's going to be a free round for the blob. And I'm willing to accept that. That's fine. Johan's talking about uh, the wizard wolf that we recruited a while back. Okay, key items delivered. All our chores are done. Let's have some fun. Uh, there are the ogres winding up to destroy something, and like an idiot, I panicked and interrupted them. I don't know why. What's the point? I, I was going to destroy it myself anyway. Unfortunately, like I said, I panicked. I heard him doing that, and I thought, oh shit. And down goes the ogre. Uh, despite being a uh, one of the uh, beefier enemies with a lot of hit points, Johan made pretty short work of him. Uh, that's partially because he has uh, the opposite affinity of the ogre, but also because Johan hits pretty damn hard. Unfortunately, Juno's stuck with this crappy lightning rod, so even though he's doing double damage, it's uh, taking quite a few blows. Alright, tree monster's down, and since I cannot attack that blob, there's really nothing left to do, so I end the round. Okay, none of the objects have respawned yet. So this round we'll just kill some monsters and get more kills in our matrix. One last key item to get rid of as well.
All right, some pretty easy kills for Johan, and then once again, there's nothing left to do. And still no more object respawn, so no more key items to worry about for this round. I do a double check to make sure I didn't forget any key items. I'm a little uh, paranoid about that, but there's none left to give away. Alright, I go ahead and throw on a ice rod here for the wizard that he can only use in law phase, which means he'll be laying a gram. Um, so a nice ice trap for that fire ogre. Now there's a spider that walks the route of the ogre as well, so I need to make sure to kill that spider first. I don't want him tripping the gram instead of the ogre. Alright, quick easy kill for Johan, that tree monster was a sitting duck. Poor Juno using this shitty lightning rod. <laughs> Good job, man. He took off about a third of his health. Alright, Spider's dead, so I'm free to lay the trap. And just as I lay it, the ogre walks away. Son of a bitch. No one reports like Gaston. And there goes the gram, it fades away. God damn it. There we go. So, not a lot of flare, but um, it did some damage to that ogre. Yep, the ogre survived, but uh, we'll see in the next screen here. Uh, his health went from 12,000 to almost 1,800. So, you know, almost an order of magnitude. Not too bad. Okay, we have a flashing red monster, so he's a final monster, and a flashing purple monster as well. So, killing either one of those will end the round, which I'm not ready to do yet. All right, we dragged that very same ogre back onto the battlefield, so uh, he's a hurting dude. Uh, the box has respawned, and it has another key item in it. Uh, once again, that ogre is going to wander, wander downwards, and he may destroy the box if I don't take him out earlier. So that'll be the first thing to do is to recover that key item. I have no magic points right now. I spent them all. Uh, fortunately, Alonzo is going to be able to uh, gather quite a few really quickly. Uh, there's also one of those hounds on the field. Uh, those guys are the ones that if they see a knight charging, uh, they'll jump on top and start mauling the knight and rob him of vitality. So that's completely unacceptable. I hate those guys. Probably my most hated enemy.
Alright, he had him gotten. No problem. And Alonzo's able to kill that ogre. Due to his positioning, uh, Juno can pretty much attack those guys with impunity. There's no way they're going to get to him. If only he had a stronger weapon, huh? That heart attack from the Lamia... Uh, if that comes in contact with a charging knight, then it'll turn them into a statue. They'll be frozen to the spot. And I need to spin one of those squares in order to uh, free them. Go ahead and get Alonzo into position so that once that signpost and patch of grass respawn, um, I'll be right there to be able to work on them and get any more key items out of them. Alright, finally get the hound down. That Lamia would be easy pickings for Alonso, but we ran out of time, so she got lucky. Alright, we have even more of these final monsters on the field. In fact, uh, there's two in play this time. So, I'm still waiting for those objects to respawn to see if they bring any key items with them. So, I'm not interested in getting any kills. I don't want to accidentally end the round. For that reason, I unequip all my weapons. Uh, every round that they're equipped, they lose a duration. But what's the point if I'm not going to use them? Alright, this is the second time Alonzo's brought up the leader of the team ads, and apparently the leader of the team ads is dead. Uh, no one gossips like Gaston. Okay, unfortunately there's nothing left to do this round. Okay, no objects have respawned, so it's the same story. I don't want any kills. Just biting time until those damn objects respawn. Okay, finally they did respawn, and sure enough the patch of grass brought along a key item with it. So I go ahead and throw on Johan, he'll have easy access to it.
And we can't forget the shitty lightning rod. Johan down to 15 vitality. He's getting low again. Uh, I suppose that's to be expected since we use him so often. Okay, the key item is gotten. And the other tree monster says, wait up, I want to die too.
once again on the inventory screen there's nothing to report I didn't bother anything I think I might have stacked one or two items just to uh, remove some of the clutter but there really wasn't much to do Okay, that brings us to yet another boss fight. Fortunately, Maria's back. I'm glad to have her back. Uh, it was kind of weird for her to just abandon us. It seems a little reckless, but uh, whatever, she's back, and she's definitely an asset to our team, so it's good to see her. Before we move on, though, let's discuss some of the things we just watched. Uh, first off, in the flashback, uh, we saw Lady Frabella heading west. Frabella is the head of the 10th Order of Knights. Um, she's been being asked by Oswald, uh, where are you going? And she says, I'm going to follow Algeri into the Western land. Algeri. Okay, that's a new name we've not heard before. At any rate, uh, why is she going to the West to follow this Algeri person? Uh, Cardinal has ordered it. Uh, supposedly, this Algeri person is a spy. 
and that is the suspicions of the Cardinal, and he thinks that the T-Mats are spies. So apparently this Algeri person um, is a, some kind of a T-Mat spy. I guess that's the theory going around. Forbella goes on to say that Algeri and the King apparently had some kind of a close relationship. So that's interesting. Uh, the King did have a wife. That's how the Prince came to be. However, she died a long time ago, so he's been single since. And apparently he has some kind of a special thing going on with this Algeri person. So, uh, Forbella's going to head west. I want to remind you guys that it's generally well known in the kingdom that the further west you go, the more conflicted the area gets. Uh, the Westkin is a group of people that, I'll go as far as to say, yep, they probably live in the west. Uh, on top of that, the tower that we saw collapse last time, that's situated in the west. It's in ruins now, but that's where it was standing in the west. Alright, um, during this round we recruited a Lance Knight named Heinel. And a couple episodes ago, we recruited a priestess named Annette. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out, though, is that uh, we've seen these two before. In fact, we saw them in one of the earliest cutscenes of the game. Here they are in the front of the castle, in front of the garden, uh, standing amongst themselves, and Heino, being referred to as the One-Eyed Knight, uh, is talking to Annette and saying, You know, I know I saw someone. Uh, it was too dark to tell, but this person I saw, she was wearing armor. I wonder who the hell she was. Well, um, have you guessed? Uh, yep, it was Maria. And here's a shot of Maria uh, right there in the front of the castle garden. Uh, this is right after she had stolen the wisp. So Heinel and Annette were in the area at the time, and they started searching for Maria, and Heinel had actually laid eyes on her. Uh, so in this cutscene that we saw quite a ways back, the timid priestess, in other words, Annette, was kind of thinking out loud, now, who was it? Maybe it was someone from the Western Lands. Maybe it's a survivor from the Tiamat. You know, who knows? It could be anyone. Uh, she goes on to say, you know, we've looked everywhere, and she can't be here. She must be somewhere else. Heinel gets a little pissed and says, you know, shit, damn it. She's not going to get away. And then she goes on to say, uh, if she escapes into town, that's trouble. I think the implication is if she gets into town, then they'll never find her. So we got to get her now. Well, uh, the rest is history. We know that uh, Maria successfully escapes, and she runs off to the abandoned church and then resurrects us as the Wisp, and that's what starts the game. Now, of course, both those knights in that cutscene were alive, and they were running around trying to find Maria. Um, however, the fact that they are now in our army, meaning we ran across them at some point during the game and recruited them, uh, of course, that means that they are now dead. So sometime between that first cutscene and when we ran into them, they were killed. Uh, we're not necessarily going to be shown how or why it happened, but obviously that's the end result. They are now dead. Anyway, at present time, uh, here we are, <laughs> just facing the boss head-to-head, -head, just kind of staring at each other, going, uh... To which uh, Maria makes a dramatic entrance and comes running up. up, up. <laughs> Beast King Dotorus, meaning of evil, do not interfere. Ugh. So, a pretty cool entrance by Maria kind of neat. We hadn't seen her for a while and then we run into this giant boss and then suddenly she swoops in and says, you know, hey, I'm here. Uh, she then says to this Dotorus guy, I will destroy you as I did Revulia. Well, I mean, I'd, I'd like to think we helped. I mean, we had something to do with that, right? But whatever, it doesn't matter. It's interesting that she mentions Revulia to this guy. She didn't mention uh, Melissa, who we fought with Maria, and she didn't mention Gunther, who we just killed. She name drops Revulia, and there's a specific reason for that. It makes sense. Revulia is a demon from the underworld, and so is this guy. So basically, Maria is telling him, hey, uh, we, we killed one of your, your uh, compatriots. We killed one of your peers, so fuck off. Uh, unfortunately, Dotorius is not impressed by that and says, you know what, she was small time, I don't care, I'm going to kill you. And that brings us to our boss fight we're going to have next time. Uh, if you take a look at the bottom of the screen, there's two health bars. So uh, it looks like it's going to be a long, drawn-out one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.